What's up guys? Welcome to our camper here at Tiger Run in Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, doing a video today that has been a little bit requested about surviving the winter here. We've seen negative 22 and negative 17 um, actual temperature wind chill, probably worse than that. And then um, also it's been like around zero or like negative five, negative 10, like for like a couple months, like a month straight. So we definitely had to do some improvising to be able to make it work. But it has been reasonably comfortable the majority of the time. It's been like a couple nights to negative 22 and 17. I mentioned where it got a little chilly, but just how we were able to do it. Um, there's four massive elements that have allowed us to make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and detail those now. First and foremost, if you wanna be comfortable, I'd say the number one most important thing is to maximize efficiency is the skirting. It's no secret, it's all over YouTube and the internet. Um, I went the budget route. What I also think is the most effective route is the two inch foam board insulation. Um, we used, did a very lackluster job of foil taping it. When we first did it, it was like negative five, our hands were freezing, the inside of the camper wasn't warm. It was just, it's pretty rough. I would have liked to have done a much neater, prettier job of getting this done, but um, I watched another video from a gentleman, I'll link it in the description, and he talked about looking underneath and making sure there was no air visible, um, or no, no light visible, and completely air sealing it. So we tried to do that as best we could with the tape, since with the snow weight and whatnot, it's kind of come off, but at first I had it done pretty well, and then we igloo the bottom, so there was no air under there except for in one spot in the back where I could access my valves, so that allowed for ventilation, but it didn't allow for any cross flow and I think that was massively important um, to keep us warm. So the two inch foam board insulation in a perfect world, what I would have done is done this insulation underneath and then had that vinyl, that black vinyl like snap on stuff around it to look perfect, but this is not a perfect camper and I didn't want to spend that much money. So this completely got the job done and I think it's the most effective way to do it is using this two inch foam board. All right, to piggyback off the insulation, uh, I mentioned igluing. Igluing refers to building the snow up around the camper. So like, at first I was iglued all the way around. It's melted, it's March now. We're not gonna see too many of those negative 22 nights anymore, if any. But like this whole igluing, this has actually helped big time keep it warm too. I've noticed, um, I've noticed a difference once we got this, in addition to the insulation that's around here, that actually helped a lot too. Not that you're always gonna be able to do that. We just got a ton of snow and it just worked out this way. But that actually helped um, as well. So if you're in an area in the snow and you can igloo up around the bottom, I think that does help. A lot of people in this park do it. And um, all it does is further insulate the bottom area, which is where you lose the most of your, most of your heat in a camper. You can see my opening I've got here um, that I just showed you. That's the most important thing, number two, is that 250 watt heat lamp. It made a big help as far as, it's right pointed on my tank, so it kept the tanks warm, it kept the area around these connections warm, and um, it, I believe also, um, it also kept the underneath of the camper warm. So it kept the area where it's insulated up a couple of degrees to where it allowed everything to stay liquid, and then it probably gave us a little bit of of a couple of degrees underneath there underneath the camper warmer to allow the inside of the camper to stay warm because the floor was staying warmer so we really didn't have once we got set up the first time got the heat lamp going negative 22 negative 17 our water never froze our um our, our tanks never froze so that heat lamp was a massive help um yeah so it's pretty much that simple and another thing that's a must have kind of a bonus i was going to do the four things that are super important um one i forgot was the slinky to the drainage hose if you leave the drainage hose on the ground and try and hand do it out it's going to freeze um get the slinky the slinky makes that a much easier process if that's the worst thing that can happen is if your black hose or if you're your drainage hose with black water and it freezes. You do not want that to happen. It happened to me. I'll spare you the details. Not a good situation um, at all. So let's go inside for the final two keys to winter RVing success for myself. All right, another bonus 
which uh, I caught from Keep Your Daydream. They've got the most popular one of our video on the uh, on the internet. I'll link that video up too. Um, I picked a lot of this stuff up from them, so it's super helpful that they did it. So I thought I would do another one, maybe some additional eyes get on it. But having this tri-prong, so this is like a heavy-duty extension cord from Lowe's, 8 gauge or 12 gauge maybe. I think it's 12 gauge. But having this, because there's only one outlet here at my box. I've got my 30 amp hookup. There's a 30 and a 50, but I don't need the 50. But there's a 30 amp hookup, and then just a regular, um, a regular three prong, 15 or 20 amp, whatever it is, hookup. And uh, so I've got that with this three prong deal, because I've got to run my heated water hose, I've got to run the heat lamp, and then occasionally I've used like a small electric heater or needed to use, needed to plug something in out here. So having these three prongs was super helpful and I like the fact that this one was hardwired in because there's less connections you don't want a lot of connections you know a lot of things connected so this is straight off of here onto here and it's hardwired to the three spots I don't have like multiple adapters where those connection areas are a lot of times is where you'll have problems with melting and stuff and I have had that happen with an extension uh, ext a 30 amp extension cord melting it just creates a dangerous situation especially when this stuff has gotten snowed over never had any problem out of this so I recommend a heavy duty gauge extension cord with the multiple hardwired prongs here outlets receptacles whatever you call them all right now we're inside all right inside now you can see it looks like some sort of 1970s alien it, like defense vehicle in here um so just for some background this camper is 1979 airstream it's not insulated very well so like this is probably like the worst one of the worst rigs we could be doing this in um the walls are thin it's got a ton of windows which is great for the summertime but it was terrible for the winter the draft was so bad so we went to lowe's for forty dollars we got this reflectix a huge roll of it and um we put this up and again with the heat foil tape sealed off all the windows that made another massive help it reflects the heat back in all the windows are covered no drafts from the windows anymore this probably gave us like another five degrees on average so it was this has been super helpful um as far as the everything anything anywhere you could imagine there was like a seal some sort of like not a solid not a solid wall we we put this stuff so there's like 12 windows in here we covered all the windows yeah it'd be nice if the windows are open sometimes but we, we did leave one window and this is the only window that the sunlight comes in so during the day we pull the insulation board down and we allow the sun to come in another thing i didn't mention behind the windows we have styrofoam insulation board with the edges taped off and we painted it white, which you could see that from the outside. But, um, so that is in the window. So there's a layer of insulation in the window and then we've got this sealing and reflecting the heat back in. That was a massive help. Um, as well, another thing, a little thing we did, any like exterior that, uh, any leftover foam board or the leftover insulation, we kind of put up underneath against the walls here where the floor and the walls came together. It was a little drafty. That helps a little bit too. So we did a lot of little things as well as the big things, but um, all right. obviously the last two massive things that helped us were the heaters. So this is the fourth and most important things. Um, this radiant heater, I believe it's $50. It's supposed to be the safest heater you can get. We run this thing when we're not here all the time. The cord has never even gotten warm to the touch. Um, it probably is not the most effective heater. It doesn't put out the most heat, but it does. Once we shut the door, it's kept the space warm. Um, no complaints. It's on wheels, so like in this tiny area we're in, it's nice to be able to relocate this as we need. I mean, it does put off quite a bit of heat. It and it with the insulation precautions we've taken, it's helped. And then this is a twelve dollar heater from Walmart. We only run this when we're here. It's a twelve dollar Walmart Chinese heater, so like. Um, I'm not trusting it with my animals here when we're not here, but when we're here, we run it and never had a problem with it. And it, it just does, it won't warm the place up or anything like that, but it just puts off that enough additional heat. And I keep it in the bathroom, which is back by where the tanks are. And I believe that also helps keep everything thawed out. Um, it'll just give a couple more degrees. So 
it's uh it's about that simple as far as what I've noticed is as far as the camper goes without without any additional help just like a heater like this nothing else we can stay about 40 degrees warmer than it is outside 30 to 40 degrees warmer so if it's zero degrees outside it'll be 35 40 degrees in here if we did nothing with and then with all these extra precautions we've taken now we can keep it 60 to 70 degrees warmer than the exterior temperature so for example during the day if it's 20 degrees outside it'll be 80 degrees in here with everything door shut both heaters running everything cranked up during the day and then at night we lose about 10 degrees so it would drop down if it's 20 degrees outside it'll be 70 to in here for example when it reached negative 22 it got down to 58 degrees in the camper so i think that's outstanding yes 58 is a little bit cold but we're working snowboarding out in it every day so it's really not too bad when it's zero degrees negative 10 around there the camper's staying around 60. And when it's 10 20 degrees the camper 65 70 degrees at night and then during the day it's as hot as we wanted in here it's been 80 it was 84 degrees yesterday when it was 30 degrees outside in here and that's just with not this running um we only heated with electric we hardly have ever used propane we primarily use the propane to cook a couple times when we first moved here we used the propane but we haven't spent any money on propane and the electric bill is about 130 to 150 dollars it's probably going to be less this upcoming one so that's unbeatable for heating we were going to have to take all these other precautions anyways even if we use propane but if we had used propane the night it got down to 58 we probably could have kept it 60 or 70 probably could have kept it another 10 degrees warmer so we could have kept it 70 in here um, when it was negative 22 but it only dropped down to 58 in here for a few hours from like three o'clock in the morning to like seven o'clock in the morning so we were asleep we just woke up and it was cold the sun came up and warmed up in here quick so um, it's been comfortable. It's totally doable, and uh, we did it on a shoestring budget. Um, yeah, we did it on a shoestring budget, so if you don't think you can do it, you definitely can. This is not a special camper. It's old. The insulation's not good, um, and we didn't use any fancy things. All this stuff at Lowe's probably totaled up. You could probably buy everything we've bought for $500. The heat foil tape, the Reflectix, the heaters... The heat lamp, the extension cord, everything in addition to your camper, 500 bucks, and you can spend a winter on a regular electric bill in Colorado, one of the coldest places. Well, it's not one of the coldest places in the country, but we made it to negative 22, so I'm going to quit rambling. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I think I covered everything. It's pretty simple. Um, peace.